What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's time for us to play some indie games, and today, I don't even know if this qualifies as an indie game anymore. I really don't even know. It's by Paradox Interactive and Hemimont Games, the guys that made Tropico. It's a new colony builder. A new colony builder that I think you're all gonna like called Surviving Mars. So join me, dive on in. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I love colony builders and I love Tropico, so anything that has to do with building a city that comes from Hemimont, I'm probably gonna check out and do my thing with. So without further ado, let's start off a new game because there is a lot of ground to cover in this first episode. There is so much stuff that we've got to talk about and get going. We're probably not going to see gameplay until about halfway through the entire episode. Just because there's lots of things to absorb here and I have advice for all of you. I've played this game now for a couple of hours. I've watched a bunch of tutorial videos while waiting for the embargo to go down. And so there are things you need to know. And if you don't know those things, you actually have like unwinnable situations where you can start out without enough resources to actually do the things you need to do. There are actually false starts in this game. So you need to be like smart about it, you need to figure it out, and you need to know about those things before you start the game off so that you can go in and not waste like, you know, a bunch of time doing something that's not really gonna help you. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta do a mission sponsor. We have the International Mars mission. They do 30 billion dollars is how much they have. It's very easy. They get four rockets. Uh, they start out with average research, lots of applicants. Their colonists never get Earth sick. They are ready to go to Mars, and they don't care about Earth. They're ready to leave it all behind. Goodbye, Florida. We don't need you. Goodbye, Mexico. We're going to Mars. See you later, California. We're flying to the stars. And we got the USA over here. They give you $8 billion. They get three starting rockets. Uh, they've got 300 research, so that's average. Uh, their rocket payload is good, and they've got periodic free funding, which is great. Blue Sun Corporation, two rockets, $10 billion in funding. Their research is a little bit slower. They're not very good at research. However, that being said, now they can buy applicants with their funding. They can buy rockets for much cheaper than all the other factions can. Their probes can find deep rare metal deposits. And then they start with a deep metal extractor. China, they've got $8 billion. Their research is a little below average. However, their passenger rockets carry more people and they get way more applicants. India, they've got $7 billion, very bad research, good applicants, their building costs are reduced by 20%, which is pretty dope, if I do say so myself. They've also got low G engineering. Uh, Europe, they've got, eh, okay funding, $6 billion. They've got really good research, a little bit above average, they've got good applicants, they get five starting technologies. Every time you actually finish a technology, you get money, and you get double if it's a breakthrough technology that, like, changes the universe. Space Y, they get five rockets, which is their benefit. They've got bad research, they've got low applicants, they get extra drones, and they get cheaper advanced resources. And so you get more rockets, which is good. But, that being said, they have lower money, they have lower research, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got the Church of the New Ark. They have no research, so you actually can't do research with them until you've got yourself set up on some other things. However, their colonists are all religious, their birth rate is doubled, their hydroponic farms sucketh all of the assets of the universists. Russia! We've got two rockets, $5 billion, below average research, uh, average applicants. They get fuel extractors. Everything they do is better at producing fuel so that you can get more rockets to space. Paradox Interactive. Apparently things are very sunshiny over at Paradox Interactive. They got that funding. It ain't nothing but Tesla, Tesla's surf and turf and gold-plated blingy necklaces over there. They got $4 billion to give you bad research, bad applicants. But they get more anomalies. They're better at researching anomalies. Every time they break through on a technology, they get applicants to go to space. And their rockets require way more fuel to launch. We're going to go with... Let's go with... Uh, uh, I don't know who I want to go with right now. We'll go with Europe. We'll go with Europe. We'll start with Europe. I think that's going to be a pretty good start. So we get the bonus research and we get the extra money every time we do a research technology. I think that's probably going to handicap us at the late game, but we've got imports and exports that will take over at that point. We also have a commander that we can bring along. So the inventor makes your drones better over the first 100 days until they become awesome. Uh, their autonomous hubs no longer need power or maintenance. They handle all their own drawbacks. Oligarch, he gives you fuel production, and he gives you the Arcology, which is a residential spire. Saves some space for a few extra colonists. We've got the Hydro Engineer. We start with a water deposit revealed. Also, require less water to run your domes, which is pretty good. We also have a bonus tech called Water Reclamation, which makes it so that you can have less water consumption. The Doctor lowers the criteria for you giving birth. He also makes your colonists live longer. The psychologist basically just makes people less crazy and makes them more happy. The politician gives you money every single time that you unlock a research. And so that's probably a good thing to take with Europe. He also gives you a bonus research that's repeatable so that you can research it over and over and over again for more money. Futurist, uh, breakthrough techs are done faster. Autonomous sensors, 
That's pretty good. Makes your sensors not cost power or any maintenance. Ecologist, our decorations actually give more comfort. And then we get the hanging gardens, which makes people happier when they live inside your domes, if there's one of those gardens there. We've got an astrogeologist. We start with a rare metal deposit revealed. Extractor production is increased by 10%. And then we get deep scanning, which means we can find things hidden beneath the soil that other factions might not be able to. The rocket scientist gives us an extra rocket, which is actually fairly major. That's a huge bonus. And then we get CO2 jet propulsion which means that we get the shuttle hub and the long-range transportation. I don't really know what I want to take right here. I know we need water, so water might be a good thing to take. However, I think I'm going to go with the politician. We'll bring a politician with us. And then on top of that, we get to pick our logo. There's a whole bunch of them here, but my favorite is the one at the bottom called Don't Panic because that's exactly what we are not going to be doing on this run. We also have the mystery. So there's an emergent storyline every single time you play the game that's going to revolve around everything from aliens to secret artifacts to like event horizon type stuff to, you know, jump gates opening up and there's wars and there's all kinds of random stuff. We'll leave that on random just to see what we get. Our difficulty bonus is 110% right now. Let's get going. Our rocket is not going to be called the Ariane. It's going to be called the Booty Monster 4000. There it is, Booty Monster 4000. Uh, this is our 4,000th attempt to go to space. You gotta get those first thousand or so out of the way when people die horribly, so that you know what not to do. We start out with three prefabbed buildings. We start out with no RC rover. We start out with an explorer. We start out with a transport, I guess? I guess we start out with an explorer. I don't know if I want a transport or an explorer. I'm not really sure. You don't really need any of them. Like, they're not super important. I start out with three orbital probes for scanning. We have 10,000 kilograms ready to go. I think I'm going to start out with that repairs. It transports commands and repairs drones. Gotcha. That one is a remote controlled exploration vehicle that can analyze anomalies. I kind of want the RC transport. That's going to weigh 10,000. So it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. Like, it's going to cost us. We start out with 15 polymers. That's very, very good, although I'd like to have more of them. We start out with six drones. Those are basically going to be your workers. In any other colony game, they would just be your average workers that go around doing stuff. We start out with ten electronics. I'm wondering if I can dump a probe to get more polymers. Doesn't look like it. I don't know what I want to bring then. Maybe we'll start with none of the transports or whatever. How many of... Let's see here. We started out with two rockets. Okay, so I didn't know how many rockets I had, so I'm trying to figure this out so I can plan for the future. We're definitely going to need more polymers, though. We need lots and lots of polymers. We may just play it as it lies, then. We might just play it as it lies. Let's go next. It'll be fine. Now we got to select our landing spot. Uh, there are pre there's like predetermined destinations down here that you can take that have various stuff. It's up to you if you want to do those. Those are various difficulty levels that are all over the place. Uh, other things that you can do is you can kind of land in an area where there's lots of resources and things. This area is relatively flat, and there's a pretty low risk for most of the stuff that's going to go wrong. That's got a decent threat of dust storms. We've got metals, we've got water. That looks pretty good. Let me pan around a little bit, though, and figure out what we got going on. So that area right there has bad water. No aquifers around. That's got really, really bad dust storms, though. Inside the crater, we've got rough topography. You know, I think we're better off going. That spot that we had down here was pretty good. That's a pretty solid spot right there. I'm going to start right there, and we'll see what happens. Because we don't want to be hit by any meteors or, like, flying bolides or anything. That would suck. That would be the worst. I'm not trying to get tagged right now by meteors. Welcome to Mars. Everyone at Mission Control is impatient to see the rocket touching down and unloading its precious cargo. Our remotely controlled eyes and hands on the red planet, the drones and rovers. Our goal is to secure a foothold for humanity by building the first Martian dome. This daunting endeavor will allow the brave pioneers, the founders, to settle on Mars and prove that the colony is sustainable. But until then, we have to make sure the colony has enough construction resources, water, oxygen, and power. Mission sponsor is Europe, and our commander is a politician. This is looking pretty good right here if we can find some water. This is looking real good right here. So we want to use our probes. There's our water. So we found it with our last probe. I was getting a little bit nervous. It's getting a tiny bit nervous. So what we want to do now is we want to land this rocket down here. Now the ring around it is where it can command drones to. So you kind of want to get everything somewhat in the middle. 
That looks pretty solid to me right there. Let's do a little rocket dance to celebrate. Okay, so we'll drop our rocket right there. Be careful where you drop your rocket, gentlemen. You put your rocket in the wrong place, you're going to end up with some problems in life. You're going to end up with some issues. Other things we got to worry about is our rocket lands. We got to set up scanners. So with our scanners, I'm just going to scan around the area that I'm inside of right now. We can queue that up pretty easily. It'll just do that on autopilot. You don't have to worry about it too much. It'll just take care of business that way. The other thing we need is an active research. So we started out with soil adaptation, it looks like. Yeah, so we started out with five free technologies right there. We got Earth Mars Initiative, so we get more research. Uh, we've got low-G turbines, which makes our wind turbines even better with polymer blades. We've got Drone Swarm right there. Drone hubs are constructed with two drones and a maximum number of 80. And we've also got Decommission Protocol, allows the clearing of salvage and destroyed buildings. That's pretty good. We've got Soil Adaptation, which gives us a farm, which is going to be built inside one of our domes. We can also go with Magnetic Filter, and while we started out with low-G Hydrosynthesis as well, Polymer factory is better. Fuel refinery looks like it's doing better. All right, we get free buildings there. Low G robotics. Our drones go faster. Wow, we really lucked out in all this. Engineers and geologists have better performance when working on their specialty. Sounds good. Let's go with magnetic filtering. That'll make our moxies better, which is our oxygen producers. That'll be done pre pretty soon. Not like crazy soon, but soon enough. And so now that our rocket has touched down, you will see that we have our drones filing on out right here. We also have our transport carrier on that side. What I would like to do, let's set up some storage areas first and foremost. This is a concrete mine down here. And so I am going to set up a few of these little concrete deposits down here that we can store stuff inside of. So there it is, a couple of little concrete deposits. Nice. So that's going to be our concrete mining area right there. And then we're going to take concrete to right there other stuff that we can do is we've got a lot of metal around I would say that let's keep everything centralized for right now I'll probably be building our living space down in this area so I'll probably want to put a drone hub down here somewhere so it'll expand our influence actually no I don't think that's gonna work we're gonna have to run piping all over the place because our mine is up here okay well that changes things around ever so slightly but the first thing you want to focus on I like to just set up my storage areas that's what I like to focus on first, is just get a whole bunch of storage areas. And we can move these around a little bit later once we have a mining area, but we're not going to have that for a while, so I'm not going to worry about it. In the meantime, I'm going to set this guy to work, go ahead and gather some resources from these little mining deposits right here. That's why I wanted to bring him along. Our drones look like they're doing something similar, so hopefully it'll all work out. Uh, the first big thing that we need to get done, though, is we need to set up a power grid. So let's have a look at the power menu down here. You can right-click anywhere, and it'll bring that menu on up. We got wind turbines. Oh, we don't have a lot of machine parts, which worries me ever so slightly. We don't have a lot of polymers either, so we're going to want to take it a little bit easy on the polymers. However, I think a big solar panel is going to be the first place that I'm going to start. We'll put that in right there. And then the second place that I'm going to start is I'm going to use a wind turbine right... Oh, we'll spread them out ever so slightly. And then we need wiring to connect this stuff. If you don't have wiring, ain't nothing going to work. So we'll set up the first big spine of our power grid right there. So lots and lots of stuff to do. That's outside the range of the drones, so they're not going to be able to grab that. I can actually just hit delete right there to end that off. And that spine will be a little bit, that backbone of our production area will be a little bit smaller. The other thing I would suggest that we work on is we start production on concrete about as soon as possible. We have a concrete connector right there. I am going to suggest that given how much concrete we have right here, that looks like the sweet spot. So we'll put that right there. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to put in our cables to get that all nice and connected up. Be careful with your cables. They do have to go to a hard point. Like if you try to put the cables down here, it's not going to work. The cables actually have to be flush with like one of the metal parts of the building or the building itself. It won't let you put it down here because there's a big blade thing that comes out and harvests all the uh, construction materials. So, just connect it to the back of a building. If you're looking for what's going to work, connect it to the back of the building. Our drones will go to work right there, and there's our first power grid up and running. They should have this guy going pretty soon as well. They're going to harvest off the metals they need from that side right there. And everything's looking easy-peasy, lemon-squeezy to measy. Uh, this guy's going to gather up more metal until he is full. Basically, I want to get all the metal taken care of so that our drones no longer have to run off to go gather things on automatic mode from other locations. Once we get this all stockpiled, they can just grab it from this little area right here, and that'll make construction flow much, much better. Like, way better. 
And so that's my first priority. This guy's not hooked into anything that uses power, which is why he's upset. We'll get it set up in a minute. It's not that big of a deal. These guys, they need four concrete, and they need some machine parts before that's going to work. So chances are this is going to get done long, long before our other thing happens. We can click up here to offload these metals inside one of our stockpile from our rover. And what you'll see is he'll just bing, 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 bing. He'll put that in right there so that we have lots and lots of metals. Next, I'm going to send him out to right here to get rid of that far away metal deposit. Just to kind of remove the temptation with our drones to go and get stuff from there. Just to remove it ever so slightly. These guys should grab from stockpiles. I don't think the stockpiles are locked or anything like that. They're stockpiles, not lock piles. So it should be okay. As soon as this is up and running, it's completely and totally automated. We don't really need to worry about it that much. But it is going to need power in order to function. So try to keep that in mind as you go forward through your playthrough. Down at the bottom, you can check your stockpiles in this little menu right here just to make sure that you have the things that you need in order to do your job properly. We do have enough polymers right now to do some of the stuff that I want to do, i.e. build a battery. But what you're going to want to save for as you go through the game is you want to get a dome up. Your first shipment of stuff is going to be passengers. And so in our relatively shitty situation right now, we only have two rockets. One of them is on the planet. It already dropped off its payload, so not going to be that much of a use to us. The second one is going to have to bring people here. It doesn't have a choice. It has to have people. Um, we can't, like, call in for extra reinforcements or anything like that, so we need to be careful about our resources at the moment, otherwise bad things are going to happen. You can buy more rockets, like, you can just go straight out in here and be like, BAM! And buy a brand new rocket. I don't know what it costs, though. 300 million, so it's kind of like one of those things you really, really, really don't want to do unless you have to do it, because that's pretty much all of your funding shot right there. Like, it's going to be gone really quickly. He's done with his job, so I'm going to tell him to offload over here and make sure that we have lots of stuff going on. Our concrete harvester is working. What's going to happen with that is it's going to spit out concrete over here, and it's going to spit out roughage stone that's not that useful to us. What we want to do with our roughage stone is we want to take that somewhere where we normally can't develop anything, and we're going to create a stockpile, and that's going to be for doo-doo dumping zones. And so we're going to put this in right here. And we're just going to kind of get that going so that we have a stockpile zone where all of our rough stone can go so it's just not laying around on the ground right there. In addition, whenever we bust up some rocks or anything like that in order to get other things done, uh, it's going to create roughage stone and things of that nature that we have to worry about. So once again, just make sure it's all out of the way. You go over there and load up those resources for me, amigo. Make that happen real fast. And then this is up and running, and it's generating 11 power right now. That's really good. Uh, what we're going to need to store that power is a power accumulator, a little battery over here. We'll make our lives a tad easier so that we have backup stuff. But be warned, that uses polymers. It uses two of them, if I remember correctly. And its maintenance is going to cost you polymers. So every time it needs to be fixed, it needs polymers. So build your dome before that thing breaks down. That's big advice for you right there. I made that mistake on my first playthrough, and I just didn't have enough polymers to get anything done. And then I had to resort to buying another rocket, which created a cash, you know, problem. And it's just one thing leads to another. So be very, very careful when you're trying to make stuff happen in this game. Otherwise, it can backfire on you. It can backfire on you pretty quickly. The other thing that our big RC car is good for once he's done is we can set up supply routes with him. So I can tell him just to move concrete to the stockpile back and forth over and over and over again if I don't want the drones doing it. That drone has run out of electricity, so another drone's going to have to help him. Uh, you go give him a jump start so that he can get back to base. Easy enough. There it is. He's using some of his power to recharge that drone so he can get inside and recharge himself. Good. I like it when my drones collaborate on things. They gotta cooperate and make things happen, otherwise... You know, if everybody's at each other's throats and sharpening daggers and whatnot, that's not good. Oh, we found an anomaly? That's pretty cool. Uh, let's cue that up for right there now that that's done. So we found an anomalous reading right there, and I thought it said that we found metal somewhere. Maybe that was just the surface metal. I don't know. We already picked it up, so maybe that's kind of a thing that's warning us from later on. These guys are going to scan all this stuff out right here. It doesn't go, like, fast, but, you know, it gets done over time, so don't stress too much over it. It's not something that I would focus my energies on too heavily. Our battery is up and going, which means our battery is charging right now, which is very, very good. Our production is 11.3, total demand is 5, so we've got a little bit of time to play with right now before we can do anything else. He's done with his... So go ahead and offload all that metal over and on this side. Is that metal right there? Oh, my good sweet lord. We've got such good metal supplies. I am happy about this. 
our metal is looking absolutely frabjous. Okay, research so our research is complete. done. Let's go ahead and slow the game down. Pause it, in fact, and we will work on a new research. We got ourselves magnetic filtering right there, which I think is really, really good. Uh, that needs to go away for a second, now that that's done. And we can work on hygroscopic vaporators, which is a moisture vaporator upgrade, which gives a coating which increases water production by 50%. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, we don't have these. I'm sorry, we don't have these. I thought because they were lit up, we had them. So I started, like, further down the chain. Basically allows you to leapfrog techs. I should have known that, but I'm an idiot. Let's go ahead and we'll do... Just hit everything in Tier 1 first. Hit everything in Tier 1. One by one, we'll get it done. We did get some funding for that, though, which is really, really good. So I don't know how much funding it gave us. It looks like it gave us a billion dollars for our funding. Not bad for a day's work. When was the last time you earned a billion dollars in two Martian days? I don't even know how long a Martian day is, so, you know, stuff to think about. Next thing we really, really, really want to get going with is going to be our water production. And so we need a water extractor. Until we have the water extractor, we're going to have some fairly major issues because we can't create water. Um, and that's an issue. It looks like it's okay with that placement right there. So I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Now we're going to need to run power grid to it as of right now. So let's go and attach the power grid to it. Let me go ahead and speed the game back up too. So that things are happening at a rate that matters while I'm doing all these menial tasks in here. Uh, let's run that back this way. That's now powered. That is now powered. Oh, that's outside my drone zone. Yup, a little bit outside my drone zone. So I'm going to have to do that a little bit uglier than I wanted to. And run it from like right here. There we go. So we should get a plug attachment from right there once this all gets done. The drones are a little far out. I may, since this is our good building area down here, what I might do... Well, we're going to have to move the rocket in the first place. And so once the rocket's all out of the way, maybe I'll build in this area. Because we got to keep the fabs close to the metal deposit. If the fabs aren't close to the metal deposit, they won't be able to walk there for their work shifts. And that becomes an issue. Is this place producing at night? Let's go ahead and turn off... I don't know, how much concrete do I have? I've got 36 concrete right now. I have lots and lots of metals. Let's go ahead and set you up on a run right here. I'm going to tell you to go and load resources from right there, concrete, and then bring them back over here and offload them. And that should be good enough for right now. He should be able to do that at a very, very good speed. Probably faster than this thing produces, in all honesty. Uh, if you wanted to see how much is in ins inside each mine, this is way better than my mine from last time. Uh, my mine last time only had 400 concrete inside of it. This one's got almost 1,000. That's probably going to last us for the rest of the game. And we just won't have to worry about it. So as you can see, he's just going to offload stuff and do what he does over there. No biggie. Power batteries charging on up. As far as our polymers go, we've got 13 left. As soon as water production is up right here, we're going to want to run piping. And so I don't know where I want piping to go to just yet. I'll probably run it along the outskirts over here because we're going to need oxygen to go over to this area. Uh, because our mine is going to be over here, and people have to work there, unfortunately. It requires those meat bodies. Drone can't do that job. Dronies can't do that job. I am going to bail out right here, and with our extra wind turbine, I think we're solid on that side. Where am I right now? What am I doing? Take me, take me back to base. There we go. We're back in base right now. You can run power cables and pipes on top of each other, but pipes are the topmost layer. So if pipes are in an area, you can't build anything else right there. So keep that in mind as well. Pipes that we're going to need to build. Let's go ahead and jump on into our water menu. Get a little bit of that uh, SimCity 2000 going on. we got pipes right there. I'm going to say our pipes have to connect from right there. And so my suggestion is... There's a blocking object on that side. Drones can't get to that one right there, so that's not going to work. We're going to have to build it on the inside. I don't want to build it on the inside, but I'm going to have to. I don't want I should have flipped that around. In fact, let's cancel that construction right now, and I'm going to flip it around real fast. That way, it works a little bit better the way I want it to. There we go. So we have no cable connection right there. That's too far from the working drone, too far from the working drone. We are just, we are scuffing the edges right now on what we can accomplish. They'll get back to it. It's not that big of a deal. That should free up the drones, though, to do what they're going to do on this side. And now, I can put in the pipes right there. Is that too far away from my drones? Oh, it's not. Good. That makes me happy to know. 
That makes me very happy to know because I can line that up now nice and proper. So we'll take that back over that way. And we are just going to run basically a water subsystem off in this direction. I, I can't really do anything with it right now, but we're getting the pipes in play for later. Essentially, this is going to be our main water area. I'll probably also run a string of pipes down this way just in case I want to build anything on this side. Looks good to me, though. Looks good to me. We've got the fundamental things going on right now that our base is going to need. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need, in my opinion, is water towers. So we'll put one in right there. I'll probably build two of those, in fact. Just one on top of the other. And the final thing that we're going to need is an oxygen tank, which is pretty cool stuff. We'll line that up right there. And then the ultimate final thing that we're going to need in this whole, like, production chain is that we need a moxie. If we don't have a moxie, just not going to work for us. And so there it is. So our moxie is going to produce oxygen. It's going to go inside of there. Water producer is going to produce water, send it down this way, store some of the runoff that's not being used. From there, the water will be converted into oxygen on that side. And once it's been converted, it'll go inside the air tank. We'll probably put in... I probably could have done that further on down the line, actually, so that we don't have to move things quite as far. I mean, the wa it's either the water or the oxygen is going to have to move a long ways. So maybe we'll try that again. Maybe I'll put the oxygen tank in right there. And then I'll put the moxie in. right there much better now I need to run cabling so our next goal that we need to do is we need to get electric up in here we need to get a little bit zappy and so I'm gonna take that over to there and we want to keep these inside these little areas as much as possible there we go and so we've run cabling up and underneath that it's looking pretty solid if I do say so myself on um, the other thing I can do is I can bust that up right there because it's not working anyways so salvaging is right here in your menu if you want to get rid of something easy peasy you can do it right there very, very simple to do. It took me a minute to find that, though, the first time I played the game. Sector scanned. There we go. Now we got power running to the water extractor. The water extractor has access to... Cable fault How much reported. water? Oh, my God. 12,000 water. Okay. It says that that's low grade, but, I mean, it is what it is. We've also got a cable fault. Uh, the cable fault is... Where's my cable fault at? Oh, it's right there. A robot will come along in just a minute and fix that. That's actually a fairly severe cable fault. That's a really bad cable fault. Eh. A robot will come along, though. If you want him to do it, like, right now, you can set up maintenance right there. And you can tell him to do maintenance or something like that. Or you can tell him to interact with it. I don't know exactly how to fix it, but every time I've done this, another robot has eventually come across and, like, fixed it, so... If you wait it out, a robot will take the initiative in just a minute and fix that thing on off. For now, this is Surviving Mars. If you want to get the game, i got a link for you down below. My name is Splattercat. Really, really happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and make some automated stuff happen on the Red Planet. I will see you all later. Uh, aside from that, if you wanted to catch me live, I'll be live every single day at 3 o'clock on Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming. You can see that on the link on screen right now. And then aside from that, you can also catch me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Splattercat Games. All those links are down below for you if you wanted to come along and peruse and have a good time with me. Hi, do, and I will see you all next time, everybody.